All right, hello, and welcome to this evening's happy hour with a historian. Um, tonight, I am joined with Fire Chief Brent Gleghorn, who's going to give us a rousing history of the Batesville Fire Department and uh, kind of tell us all about it and and what's been going on with it and the history of it all. And I'm going to pass this off to him uh, here in a second. But I also want to remind everybody that if you do have questions and um, comments or anything for uh, Chief Leghorn, just uh, put them in the chat in the Zoom and uh, we will get to those as we see them or we will have a Q&A right there at the end um, once he's done giving his presentation for tonight. So without further ado, here's Chief Leghorn. Thank you, Clint. Well, good evening, folks. Uh, hope there's a lot of you out there on this uh, rainy night in Batesville. Uh, I'm, I was really amazed to see that. I wasn't expecting it. Uh, I'm going to just kind of give you a little uh, background with the fire department starting in like 1885. Uh, I have a paper here that was written by someone. I do not know who. Some of y'all may know who done it, who did it after uh, you hear what is in it. Uh, and please reach out and let us know who it was. Uh, we don't have record of that. Uh, but it starts, to, it was written around or late in, in 1978, I believe. And it starts around uh, 1885. And the title is uh, From Bucket Brigades to Hose Carts to Hand Pumps to Pumper Trucks to Elevating Platforms of 55 Feet. This was on or about 1978. That's when we got our first aerial device that was uh, 55 feet in height. Uh, the sirens now used to give warning, and remember this is 1978, a fire would have terrified the early citizens of Batesville. Probably the earliest warnings were the firing of a shotguns, pistols, or the quick blast of a hunter's horn. These blasts called the townspeople together and bucket brigades formed promptly and were off to the scene of the fire. Uh, by 1885, there was a semblance of a fire department. It was composed of able-bodied men who were the town's outstanding citizens. The bucket brigade was the best, but inadequate defense against fire. A chemical engine was purchased from the Racine Fire Engine Company. This was also unreliable when needed and was disposed of in 1889. The next firefighting equipment was two hose carts and hand pumps purchased by the city for $130. And I don't know about y'all, but in the 1800s, $130 was probably a fortune. Uh, the only catch to this was the equipment depended on pumping water from wells. You know, there was no city water. So they had to depend on well water from the residents to have water to fight the fires. This often brought on a fist fight when the firefighters were opposed by citizens who objected to water being drawn from their wells when it wasn't their house on fire. In the early days of the courthouse bell gave the signal for fire alarms and other emergencies. There were special uh, clanging when the bell was rung for fire. When the bell gave the fire signal, the whole town turned out to lend a hand. By 1898, Batesville was a growing town. This brought on improvement bonds to build a water and a light plant. And uh, a lot of folks don't know that Batesville used to own their own uh, electric power plant. Uh, a year later, the water system was completed and the host carts were located at strategic places around town. Uh, some on Basel Street, some on 7th and 8th Street at, at, at what used to be Arkansas College. It's now the campus of the Presbyterian Church. Uh, the official fire department for the city of Batesville was organized on June 2nd, 1901. Uh, Burton Arnold was appointed chief and he was given seven days to select the other men that were gonna make up the fire department. He had to choose an assistant chief, three ward captains, a secretary, a treasurer, and then more firefighters. All told was about 24 men. 
April 3rd, 1903. Council vote, voted to buy a first class fire wagon, which was ordered on April 20th and was used until 1916. Chief Arnold made a request for repairs on the number one host cart. Later in the year, the Arlington Hotel Bar, the number one host cart did not pump, pump properly. So the fireman kind of got frustrated, tossed it in the fire and let it burn with the building. So, you know, you don't make firemen mad, I guess. <laughs> uh, December 7, 1903, the council allotted $500 to complete and equip the fire department. Uh, another time in history when $500 was considered a lot of money. Uh, uh, May 2nd, I see. In 1904, J.A. Hardy was elected chief, uh, actually took over in May the 2nd, and he served until April 15th, 1930. So from 1904 to 1930, 26 years, the longest standing chief of our department to this day. Uh, and shortly after his resignation as chief, he passed away. Uh, I'd like to know a little more about him and, and, and know a little bit about the history about him. I'm sure somebody around here can share with us. Uh, January 4th, 1904, uh, the driver of the fire wagon, I'm not going to call his name, but it's in here, uh, ran over and killed a milk cow belonging to another resident. The city paid this resident $25 for his cow, and they fined the firefighter driving the wagon $15, which was half his monthly salary, not for running over the cow and kill it, but for failure to alert the street. So he didn't sound his bells or, or whatever and alert the street that he was coming. Uh, the bell from that wagon is on display at our Dogwood Fire Station today. Excuse me, my nose itching. Uh, since there was plenty of steam at the new power plant, uh, it was decided to purchase a steam wildcat fire whistle. Uh, the whistle would sound off weird lonesome blasts designating the ward the fire was in. The scream of the wildcat would make goose pimples run up and down the spine of most men, especially if within close proximity of the power plant. It's been reported that on a day with the wind in the right direction, it could be heard as far as Newport. Uh, and we have the whistle or it, the whistle still exists in Independence County. And we had it set up to run on uh, just air. And uh, it is unbelievably loud. Uh, it's owned by a private citizen at this point in time. Uh, in uh, September of 1916, uh, the council voted to buy a Model K Rio motor-driven fire truck. This is the first motor-driven fire truck that the city of Batesville owned. Uh, it was purchased from the Barnett Edwards and Wasson uh, Company, uh, BEW Automobile Company of Batesville for a total of $1,750. When uh, they got it, the fire wagon had been pulled by horses. So they put the horses on the street, pulling the trash wagon. Well, when the alarm for fire went, the horses knew what to do. They knew to run, run to the station. Well, that created a lot of problems because now they had to pick the trash up again. Uh, they ended up selling the horses uh, for $100 and I was told by a, a past firefighter, one of my assistant chiefs, that they had they sold them the other side of Pocahontas to make sure they got them far enough away that they wouldn't hear that whistle again. And then it cost the city two three hundred and fifty dollars to replace them with a new team of of horses to pull the trash wagon. Uh, there was a lot of excitement when the 
the fire engine responded to an alarm and the, scared the horses and and all the kids ran to the street to watch and the parents was trying to keep the kids in the yard till the fire engine went by they were all scared of it everybody was it was new to them uh, so that's kind of that the, the bell off this truck is also on display at our fire station on white drive or on the dogwood drive out by sonic where everybody knows now uh, in 1918 department moved from the lander's livery stable which was on the corner of um, south and spring street well nobody in batesville probably knows where south and spring street was so south street was called it was what what is now college avenue and spring street is what was what is now central avenue uh and it moved to its present present location of station one at uh, fourth and college uh and they disposed of the old station for $150. Somebody gave them $150 for the old station. Uh, the Wildcat whistle announced fires until 1924 when the steam uh, production of power was changed to engine driven oil burning engines. And they had they moved it around a few times and never could ever get anything to work correct. And they had made several different deals. They eventually ended up with it at the Mount Olive Stave Mill, and I have no clue where that was at. That was, uh, but they end up doing some other things to help get the message out. Uh, somewhere after that, the council decided to buy an electric driven siren and it was mounted on top of a steel uh, triangle shaped pole uh, at the fourth and college locations and was used up until the late late 70s early 80s i remember as a child living at Southside and being able to hear the siren whenever it went off uh, on April 22nd, 1920, uh, Batesville had a major fire. There were 40 residents, uh, residents residential houses lost. Uh, it was supposed to have been, uh, apparently it started uh, in some wiring at a, at a local house and it was on the college and Basel Street areas where the fire burned. Uh, estimated loss back then was four to $500,000. And that was, you know, 1920. It's uh, 101 years ago, last month, or in April, last month. Uh, it was so bad, they ended up calling Newport to come help. And by the time Newport got here, everything was pretty much put out. Shortly after Newport got here, there was another building in another part of town reported to be on fire. And it's unknown if it was part of the aftermath of the big fire but Newport firefighters went over and handled that. It was more toward the downtown area, what we know the downtown area now. Uh, pretty, pretty stiff winds, they said that day, according to the report. Uh, like I said, there was, there was about 40 different families or more left homeless because of that one fire and several businesses were burned. Um, January 2nd, 1923, uh, the mayor at the time, John Warner, appointed a fire committee to arrange the purchase of a new truck. This truck was ordered on February 8th, 1923. Uh, and it don't really tell in this history what the truck was, uh, but there's pictures of it around either here at the a museum or it may be some of the ones we have at the fire department. Uh, it was a, okay, let's see, maybe it was a 1926, all right, no. Again, in 1926, 
they purchased a six cylinder international and that's all it says. It don't say anything about what it was or how it worked. Uh, in 1932, the fire department sponsored a benefit movie and it was, uh, all the actors were the firefighters. Uh, it was the uh, fireman save my child was the name of the movie. Uh, in 1940, uh, two new trucks were bought, uh, a 500 gallon per minute Ford and a 500 gallon per minute GMC. Uh, in 1977, the GMC was still in service in Batesville and the Ford had been no donated to the newly formed Southside Fire Department. Uh, I started to work for Batesville Fire Department in February of 1986. And when uh, Marshall's Dry Goods burned on Main Street, a few years later, I actually drove that 40 mile truck and laid fire hose off of it. And it was later sold uh, off of the internet, over the internet, when the internet, you know, in the nineties, it was sold. And it went to Rachel Cucamonga, California, to a private individual who was going to restore it and use it to fight fire on his farm, his ranch, uh, and take it to parades. Uh, it was a convertible truck, and uh, it was just a pretty neat old truck to drive. To put it in pump gear, you had to stand on the ground with one foot, clutch the truck with the other foot, and shift the truck from standing outside of it. It was interesting. Uh, in 1954, city purchased a new American La France 750 gallon a minute pumper for $15,232.50. I would give anything to be able to buy a fire truck right now for that kind of money. Uh, and like I said, when I started driving uh, for Batesville Fire Department in 1986, this 1954 was the truck I trained on first. They always started you with the oldest, worked you to the newest. They didn't want you to break the new one. <laughs> uh, it's just amazing how long that the city uh, has kept some of these trucks. And honestly, I just don't know if the new stuff, stuff we buy now will ever last as long as that stuff did, you know? Uh, a 1940 model truck was pushing 50 years old when we took it out of service. It, it's just unreal. Uh, jump forward to 1965. It's a pretty, pretty big year for Bates Fire Department. Uh, the old stucco building that they, they were housed out of on the corner of 4th and College was torn down, and a new brick building was erected. Had three, three. Uh, stalls for fire engines, uh, living quarters, training room, and a chief's office. Uh, they got a brand new 1,000 gallon a minute Ford pumper. It was $11,900, you know? So that's kind of weird because in 57, they paid 15,000 for one. And now in 65, they paid 11,000. When, when we got rid of that truck in uh, the early 90s, that 65 model, I think we got more than 11,000 for it. I'd have to look back. We got 10 or, 10 or 12,000 or 15,000 or something for it, but it was really close to what we had, you know, originally invested in the truck, which I thought was just kind of neat. Uh, Faye Lindsay was the mayor then. Um, kind of mixed up with my notes, but that's where that's, uh, that was just pretty neat to be able to see all these notes and, and then know what I know. 1977 was a great year again. You know, we jumped forward 12 years, uh, for the fire department and the citizens. Uh, one of the most modern pieces of firefighting equipment for the time was purchased. It was a Hendrickson truck with a 55-foot elevating platform. Had a 1,000-gallon-a-minute 
pump and a 500 gallon tank it had 163 feet of ground ladders carried on the truck, not counting the 55 foot platform. Uh, price was a little, little bit more, 140,000. Uh, in 77, that was a lot of money, just like the other years, they was, you know, a lot of money for the deal. Uh, Mayor, the mayor was Peyton Golden. The fire chief was Jim Cummins, or J.W. Cummins, as everybody knew him. Uh, and that was in 77, it was when it was ordered. Or I guess that's when they received it. In 1978, under the same leadership of uh, Mayor Peyton Golden and, and Chief Cummins, uh, they built a new fire station, which was their second fire station. And it, it was at uh, on Dogwood Drive, across from White Rogers and by Sonic, where everybody knows now. Still in operation today, and it's staffed by two firefighters. Well, they didn't have enough firefighters. They only had three full-time firefighters, so they hired three more full-time firefighters to staff that station. Uh, and, it, you know, it was, it was a lot bigger than our downtown station, Station 1 at 4th and College. It had 12-foot wide, 14-foot tall doors and 50 foot deep engine bays and uh had living quarters with lockers it was, you know uh had a hose washer and a hose dryer and uh we still have those today and there's a lot of fire departments in the state of arkansas that have none of that they have to pull their hose up hang it in a tower and let it dry so that was a big thing especially in 1977 uh, like I said, in addition to the new station, there were three men being hired that, that made, we had six paid men on duty 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, each man worked and still do. They work a 24 on 48 off, which is basically, they work 10 24 hour shifts a month. If you figure that up to eight hour days, they work 365 days a year. So uh, that's, pretty much uh, the history up to 1978. Uh, I have a list of all the fire chiefs here. Then this is when I got this document. And I want to say a shout out to Mike Collins. Uh, Bill Collins was assistant chief when they hired me and Mike brought us boxes of history that his dad had saved. And this was in that. And this makes me the 20th fire chief for the city of Batesville uh, since 1901. Uh, we had three acting chiefs, uh, one back in 1958 and one in 1991. And then I was acting chief from February of 2010 till December of 2010 when I was named the fire chief. And if things go like they're going, I'll be here for another 15 months. <laughs> and then somebody else can take the reins. Uh, but uh, it's just pretty, pretty neat to look back and see all this information. I'd be glad to answer any questions if anybody wants to send any questions in. Uh, uh, that's about all I have. If you'll see sitting here next to me, uh, this uh, chrome fire extinguisher is one of the old type that's a soda acid. You turn upside down and and uh, then it does its thing. And the, the bucket to my left is an old cloth fire bucket. Uh, those are getting harder and harder to find all the time. And some of this is fixing to go to the firefighting museum in Little Rock that's being built in a, in a retired fire station. Anybody has any questions, please let us know. Thank you. Yeah, Clint, Clint, I appreciate this. Yes, anytime. I'm just, I'm just ecstatic to have this history being brought out and, and educate everybody about it. Because there's so much more about the Statesville Fire Department that I didn't even know about until we started having right. conversations and everything. Um, we do have a couple of questions. Okay. Uh, we want to know how many trucks um, does Batesville have today? Okay. I think it's like it's we have... We have... Three pumpers, which we call engines, and they basically carry a thousand gallons of water, uh, up to a thousand gallons of water, and they have a twelve hundred and fifty gallon a minute pump. 
We have two aerial devices. Uh, we have like our 1977 55 foot platform. We have a 104 foot platform that has a 2000 gallon minute pump on that truck and a 500 gallon tank. And we have a 75 foot truck we call a Quint because it does so many different things. Uh, it has a, it's just like a straight ladder on it that goes 75 foot tall. It has a 1500 gallon minute pump on it. It also has uh, 500 gallons of water and it'll handle, it can haul six men if we had six men on duty at one time or if we're in a meeting, then people can just jump in. And these trucks carry all of our equipment. We also have one service truck, which is a truck that just carries extra equipment that we might need if it was a big building or a special situation. And then we have another truck that is a uh, 2011 uh, rescue truck. And that's the one we use to do auto extrications and, and rescues uh, in the city limits and uh, around Independence County. Okay, and second question I had was uh, how many firemen you guys <clears throat> employ there? I guess professional as well. I guess you also have the volunteers. We do, well. we do. Okay. We have uh, uh, myself and, and uh, Ronnie Painter are the chief and assistant chief. And we have uh, uh, 12 firefighters that are on duty, three of those being captains and three of them being lieutenants. That way, if anybody's off duty for vacation or sick time or, or whatever, then we have an, a, an administrator on duty 24 7, 365. Uh, in our, all our volunteers are not really volunteers anymore. They're actually part paid firefighters, but they carry a pager and they work another job in the community. Uh, we have uh, 18 slots. We currently have 16 of those filled and we have a couple of really, really promising prospects to fill the other two. Awesome. Right. And uh, I know, well, my last question for you. Okay. Actually, it's more of a, I want you to kind of expand on something. Um, you mentioned the trucks and stuff, and the yes. 25 foot and whatever, and that's the length of the ladders. Yes. And whatnot. And I know I, I'd actually got a chance to come over and, and visit with uh, with Brent one day, and he was telling me a story about how they used to test out their firemen. <laughs> yes, we with did. those trucks and stuff. So I'd like you to pass that on as a piece of history for these people. Okay. Well, so. well, when you get on a fire department, you have to do what we call a physical agility, agility test. And it's nothing really to do with the fire department at that point other than we want to see if you can climb a ladder we want to see if you can withstand uh being in dark places or in cramped quarters uh and if you've got the durability to drag me out of a fire if you need to <laughs> you know they don't let me go in anymore they might be stay outside but in case one of our firefighters gets down we need to make sure that everybody that's there are able to get that person out of that building. Uh, I'm not going to say what I was thinking because it jinxed me. Uh, just prior to my getting on Batesville Fire Department, they had this test that they put you through. Uh, and when you applied for a, a position as a volunteer, when I just about the time they quit doing this about the time I got on, you had to put $2 with your application. So you had to pay to get on the fire department. If you got selected to be a member and it was a, by actually a vote of the members and they had black balls and white balls. And if you got a black ball in the bucket, you didn't get on. But if you got on the department, you didn't get your money back. If your application was turned down, you got a dollar of it back. So, but then after you did that, they had this 40 foot ladder, wooden 40 foot ladder, and they would tie four ropes onto it, two on one uh, rail and two on the other rail, and they would stand that ladder straight up 40 foot tall. You had to climb up one side, over the top, and down the other side. Uh, thank goodness they stopped that just before I applied for the job. <laughs> and I didn't have to do that, but uh, 
that actually was done. I think it's illegal now to do that. OSHA and the Department of Labor would have a meltdown if they saw a fireman doing that. But we do make our guys climb the 100 foot platform. Uh, they have a harness on, they have a helmet on, they have gloves on, and they have a safety line attached to them. So they couldn't fall if they did get scared, you know. But so far, I can't remember us having anybody that applied to get on as a volunteer or part paid member that's failed. Okay. Some take a little longer, some just go up and back down it real quick, but that's some of the humor. And don't ever let somebody, don't let a fireman know that you're scared of something or you don't like something or it bothers you because they are relentless. They'll never let you live it down. Yeah. Well, uh, there's no more questions. So, uh, Brent, I want to thank you. Mr. Glickhorn, I want to thank you for coming out tonight and uh, give us a wonderful history of, of the baseball fire department. Um, and I don't know if you mentioned it or not, but we do have the, the oldest, I believe, in the county or in the state, or is it the fire department. fire department? Yes. I don't know if we're the oldest or not, but we're the oldest existing city. So I haven't researched that to find out if we're the oldest, actually oldest department. Okay. But I do know that. June, we are pretty old. We started with yeah, Bucket Green. 120, 120 years old. Well, that's incredible. That's incredible. Well, thank you again, sir, for coming out and giving us that wonderful history. And thank you all for joining us tonight uh, to learn about the baseball fire department. Thank you again, and good night.